president of Fan TV. So without further delay, let me give a quick house rule. One to two minutes about yourself. Highlight that related to the audience and about what you do, about our topic. And then you have three to four minutes to leave us your free talking point that we can take home about how to be a, a smart, informed, and active voter. Sounds good? Sounds good. Yes. Um, one, 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 yeah, one by one. So um, the last come in, the first talk. Oh, I'd rather be the last, actually. Thank you very much. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. All right. I'll let you to settle down. Okay. All right. Maybe Balaji, please. Running out battery. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> okay. this, yeah, this works. So thank you for hosting this event. Um, I am Balaji Venkatraman. I'm a trustee in the Evergreen School Board. And uh, I'm an executive in a technology company. It's a top 10 software company, global software company. I'm also an adjunct faculty in San Jose State University. I've got a PhD in computer science and an MBA from Santa Clara University. And education is critical. Education opens doors. And that's what gives me the passion to teach and the passion to serve as a trustee. I've served as an Evergreen School Board trustee twice up for election this November 6th. And uh, now, I want to key off of what Eleanor from League of Women Voters said about defending democracy. And I brought a quote with me. I, w I usually don't need notes to speak, uh, but I want to be precise here. And that is, an enlightened citizenry is indispensable for the proper functioning of a republic. Self-government is not possible unless the citizens are educated sufficiently to enable them to exercise oversight. It is therefore imperative that the nation see to it that a suitable education be provided for all its citizens. And this was said by none other than the author of Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights, Thomas Jefferson. Right? That is the legacy we have. That is why it is so important that we become aware of the issues, educate ourselves on the pros and cons of every measure that is out there, be thoughtful, and not just vote based on advertisements and emotions, but understand the issues, understand the financial implications, understand the unintended consequence of a measure that you vote on. And finally, as a candidate this November, I'm down ballot. Right? You get the governor, you get other federal, uh, the, the, the senator, measures, local and state, and somewhere down below, school board. And I want my community to be educated, have the patience, and go down and vote through the entire ballot because you want to think globally but act locally. Thank you. Great. Can I just Thank say you. That, that I actually, say that? <laughs> less than four minutes. You are very precise. So, Sophia, okay. I. So, I would prefer just sit. Hi, everybody. My name is Sophia Kao. I'm a first generation immigrant. I came to the United States in the 90s and got my. I was an engineer. I was in double E major and working as an engineer for over 15 years. Then, after my second child was born, I moved on to education and heavily involved in my children's schools. And I used to homeschool and working on lots of the, my passion is the STEM education. And after, uh, in 2016, you no, know, I kind of moved my uh, involvement in school in, in to broaden it into the community. So I ran for, and I ran for the school board for the, I'm currently a, a Saratoga Union School District board member. And uh, I think I can speak, okay, I, I really appreciate that, you know, hearing uh, San Jose State professors 
you know, really the advocacy for the importance of the civil engagement and the vote, you know, uh, informative voter. However, I would like to bring a, a slightly different perspective. I believe in Silicon Valley, you know, I'm a very, very typical, like a first generation immigrant, how we get here and uh, we, we, will, we really establish our family and uh, like a new home here. And uh, I witnessed the development and how a first generation uh, uh, immigrant, you, you should know, you, you're here, find a job, you have your family, you raise a ch ch a children, and you start to think about beyond just uh, your family and your, yourself. Then you start to involve in school, then you start to involve in the community. I, I, I'm actively, a volunteer in my church, as well as very actively serving in the community. I'm currently alliance, uh, alliance international members. I'm part of the League of Women Voter, and uh, mm, so I think uh, to me, to be a educated voter or like smart voter is a not just a, like a slogan. It's a real process for myself because I still remember when I first come here. I I don't really understand the system. Okay, but during the the heavily involved in from the school and from involved in the community service, I start to understand not only the system, but why it's so important. You know, you have to uh, be actively be part of it and how to be part of it. Okay, by, I think the most simple is for the, for example, a, a, fam, a, a parent, you should start to get involved in your school policy, okay? Uh, very simple. So you need to uh, be a very active voter. You start, it's a lifestyle. It's not just uh, you know, when you, it's election season, so I, I start to read, read the ballots and try to understand it. It's really a lifestyle. To become a very uh, smart voter or in, informative voter, it really start, you, know, you care about what's going on in your school, in your community. And uh, you start to maybe start from the issues in your cities. You, and the, later on, once you get more involved, you can spend more time on your, the legislator. You can try to talk to your uh, uh, school, school board member in terms of the policy making in the school. Talk about city council in terms of the policy in your city. Then eventually you talk to your legislators. So you, you care about the, the wider you know, impact on the, the policy being made on the, uh, on the state level. And I'm also part of the legal woman voter because I really, you know, echo the passion that uh, is a uh, uh, in, encourage the voter to register. Currently, we have a lot of parents, you know, Im Im immigrant. They they don't care about voting. They don't. They're not familiar. They don't bother to register vote. So you no. Know, so legal woman voter. They encourage how to register the voter and to educate the voter how to get involved. I think that's the you no know, really you no. Know, uh, I'm, I'm like a living test, and I encourage lots of people get involved in that, and also run for the for the officer. Okay, to be more the advocate for our own generation. Thank you. Wow. You must have a stopwatch. Four minutes exact. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry to giving them the pressure uh, to put those buzzwords in in such a short time, but I guess. It is important if you can help us to hit home your free point in addition. Uh, we'll have a little bit more time, so Yang, please. My name is Yan Xiao, and uh, thanks to Ding Ding TV for having me. This is not the first time I've been here for uh, this type of topic. I think uh, uh, such panel is very important. Right now, I am president of Fremont Unified School District Board and uh, I came to this country when I was uh, uh, 22. I just graduated from college, and I came to Harvard University and got my PhD degree in chemistry. I'm very grateful to this country for offering me the best education. Uh, so I always want to give back to the community. Serving the community is always in my heart. Over the last 20 years, I became a regular blood donor, and I donated over 17 liters of blood uh, over the 20 years, uh, three times the amount of blood in my body right now. Uh, also, um, I'm uh, actively involved in different organizations. Right now, I sit on the board of Citizens for Better Community, short for CBC. Uh, also, I'm a board member of APAPA East Bay chapter. APAPA stands for uh, Asian Pacific Islander American political affairs. 
Uh, I'm also a volunteer for a local nonprofit organization called FUS, Fremont Unified Student Store, which uh, uh, helps uh, raise funds for our school district. So um, as um, in my own experience, um, every election is very important because uh, it is um, our right to use the uh, vote to uh, really try to improve our city, our community, uh, our state, or even our country. So uh, in addition to what the other speakers uh, or panelists have uh, already said, I just want to uh, remind all the voters that there are so many opportunities for you to understand not only the uh, propositions and all the measures, but also uh, the, uh, uh, to get to know all the candidates. For example, uh, yesterday um, we just had a, a forum for all the city council member uh, candidates organized by the League of Women Voters uh, in Newark, uh, in uh, Union City, and in Fremont. And uh, by the way, this year I'm running for uh, Fremont City Council District 4. So this is a wonderful opportunity for uh, voters to get to know all the candidates. Uh, they have live TV cast. They also have video on archive for voters to go back and visit again and again before you decide which candidate you support. In local elections, uh, especially for city council, mayor, and uh, school board members, it's nonpartisan, which means that you don't have to vote by your party line, and you don't have to vote by your race. Um, in my case, District 3, uh, District 4, sorry, and we have three candidates that are ethnic Chinese, so how can you choose, right? If you're a Chinese person and you decide to vote by race, you know, how do you choose? I encourage every voter to have an open mind. Just don't simply vote by race because you need to understand how this candidate can help you. And uh, so for that, not only for the, um, all the forums, uh, candidates, they have a meet and greet uh, events that they typically would publicize and, you know, on social media. When it's in your neighborhood, you just go to such event, really get to talk to the candidate face to face. Also, a lot of candidates are walking precincts, knocking on doors. When uh, they come to you, you also have a chance to find out really why they're running and what they can do for you. And uh, of course, uh, we always get voters' guide from uh, our counties, Alameda counties, Santa Clara counties, and uh, all the information in that small booklet will help you understand more about all the measures, all the propositions at different levels. So um, in all, please spend time for this election so that you can benefit more from this election. Thank you. Thank you very so, much. So I, I want to re-emphasize re this. If you're not registered and vote, you are invisible. So please go ahead. Thank and, you very much. And, I, and I'm so glad because last week I was in DC uh, talking with NAFA. Uh, in the National Forum, the National Federation of Filipino Americans, exactly on that topic, civic engagement. Please. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, uh, uh, Diana Ding, Sandy. Thank you guys for having me here. I'm very honored. Um, so I managed for 20 years in the bank, believe it or not. I know I look young, but you know, us Filipino, I'm, I'm quarter Chinese, you know, I don't really age that much. But uh, again, 20 years in the banking. And I started the first Filipino American Network channel in history in the, in the Bay Area at Alum Rock in San Jose, actually. And I live in Daly City. So with that said, you know, um, you know, the way I saw the Filipino Americans, you know, were mixed with black, white, Chinese, Latin, Indian. So 
by building diversity, unity, collaboration, I was able to give a voice and a face for everyone. Because I see everyone as one, because we're all connected somehow, some way, right? So, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, when, when I look at a network, it's like, how can we be diverse, you know? And, and that's the way I saw it, you know, giving a voice and a face for us that we're like a melting pot here in, in the U.S., you know? Globally, we are going to be as one, you know? Um, so, with, with that said, the, the way I think is the most important thing is why is it important to vote? Because every vote counts. People don't understand that every vote counts. And when you're voting for some, something, you, you really need to kind of look at and, and, and really read on the dotted line what that person's talking about. Just because the person looks good and he it looks like he's saying all the good things, if you're not reading on the bottom line what's, what he's going to do, it's going to affect if it's gonna affect our economy, the family. Y you guys uh, can't just say yes to this person because just because the other person doesn't look like he's saying the right things, but he's saying... Uh, something that you feel is negative, if you read it on the bottom line and what's saying, it could be a positive thing that would save money. So you guys really got to really look at what you're, vo what, 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 what you're voting for and who you're voting for. Because again, you know, uh, we want a great leader that will lead by example, that will make a difference, you know. It, it's going to change, it, it's, this person will change the economy, will change uh, your uh, environment where we're at. So, you know, if you don't vote, Guys, whether you like it or not, it's going to affect you guys. So by, 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 by that one vote can make a big difference, guys. So again, you know, please vote. It's very important. And uh, I really uh, am grateful that I'm here and with you guys here. And it's an honor to be here at Ding Ding TV. So thank you so much, guys. Wow. Dean only used two and a half minutes. And so before I turn on to the floor for Q&A, um, I want each of the panelists think about a one-minute wisdom that you can leave the audience. But after we ask the question first, so I now I open up the floor. Here we go. Hi, my name is Ray Hing. I do not represent anybody, although I wear I'm wearing a Papa shirt. Uh, I was sitting in here from the beginning to almost the closing. I noticed the most that we have probably are 30 some people. Of the 30 some people, about 20 some people are either working for the city government or related to the government. Okay. I've been in, the, in this country of over 51 years. I, I came here in 1967. So, I've been working 40 years out of my 51 years in the United States is to promote Asian American causes. And I look at in, in this audience, I feel depressed. Okay. And you're talking about, are you talking about being informed, being a smart uh, voters? Who do you have to vote? What kind of issues that you have to put in? But looking at it, the audience today, like I say, I feel very bad. Asian American voting rate in the in any election is only sixteen percent. Okay, the Chinese community they register for forty percent, but they only came out to be sixteen percent. How can you be? For me, okay, I'm asking my Indian Kali. I'm asking for my Filipino Kali. By the way, my wife came from the Philippines. So, do you have the same issues that you're facing in your community? How can we entice our community that you say every vote counts? To me, every vote, it doesn't count if you're not fully informed. That's my comment, too. And maybe you can take it out. Maybe you can in increase my motivation. I'm really, really on, on a down, okay? So, particularly what happened today, the event too. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak up. I don't really understand what this forum is all about, what this forum is target for, what, what, what is your vision for, for having today's discussion. All right. Thank you, Anthony. So Ray's question is how to entice more people to vote and also, we all understand 
what we are facing a challenge is the 16%, the low percentage of, even though we register, we don't go out to vote. So, so how, uh, maybe, please take, take on it freely. So it is true, right? Even speaking for the, the Indian American community, the participation rate is very low, right? Uh, and that is true for everyone, but that said, you know, we are trying to lead by example. My sons have graduated and gone, right? I don't see a lot of Indian Americans uh, standing for political office. They think that it's beneath them or they don't have the time to engage. But I don't see it that way. I see it as part of a civic responsibility. Uh, as you have said, I too came here with two suitcases, got myself a great education, Right? Um, and this is a way for me to give back. And, and so as I walk the community, every weekend I walk the community, and uh, whether it's an election season or not, I'm out there. And when I do that, I talk to people, build a personal relationship, and, and have them educated on the issues, have, have them come to board meetings. And I say, if you do nothing else, you want free entertainment, come to the board meeting and you will see how we, how we make the sausage, if you will. Right? It's, it's tough business. In schools, the purpose is to provide education to our children, but there's a business end to it, and that's what we are responsible for. We have fiduciary responsibility. So one last comment. So all that said, the reason why we are here and the reason to inspire confidence in you is we have Ding Ding TV that is going to reach out to the Chinese community and we have the Filipino TV that is going to reach out to your community and we have Vandana's India Currents that's going to reach out to that community. And that's the way to get the word out. Right? We have social media. I'm nervous about Facebook. I, I teach cybersecurity in San Jose State. I'm very nervous about Facebook. Uh, Facebook. But it is a way to get the word out. And so that's what we do. We get the word out. We talk policy. We stay above the fray. We don't stoop down to the lowest common denominator, but stay on message, talk to the policy, tell them what change we will affect, how we will affect it, what are the roadblocks, and what kind of support we need for the community to make that change. Thank that you. That is how to make the difference. Thank you, Balaji. Um, before we go on, one thing remind everyone is, yes, the percentage low. Uh, if you're depressed, join the club. We are too. But I always said to the crowd, if you're not happy, don't get mad. Get even by participate. Participate means every one of us has the opportunity and the responsibility to tell a few more. You need to go out to vote and be informed. And thank you. By the way, you're sharing those information, very valuable, particularly for the local. So, Sophia, please. Thank you for this question. This is you know, deeply you know, touching my heart because I can give you an example like in our district. Uh, we are very you know, top national, top ranking district. So it's like uh, nobody, the parent doesn't need to worry too much about who is on the school board because automatically our student, you know, just the, the fact that we will always keep a very high profile in the, the perfect school and the top, top ranking. However, one experience that we're able to get the parent to get involved using a school district election as an example is, you know, we, uh, there was a controversial issue, you know, some, some kind of hot issue kind of uh, stirring up the community. And uh, one, once there's a, some issue here, then so my point is sometimes we see now with the political atmosphere, there's uh, some of the controversial issues and the people kind of divide. You see people you know, fighting about things, you have a different opinion. I, I would say that's not necessarily a bad thing because it is indeed that's a, 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 a part of the democracy system by you know, uh, raising a controversial issue and the people start to participate and the, the voice a different viewpoint. And in our industry, we, because we do have a controversial issue, so the parents start to get involved. And the, 
uh, after that issue was settled or not being you know, resolved or not resolved, the next election, we see a huge uh, increase in the participation and parents start to care about, you know, we should, we should get involved in this. So we get a higher voting rate and we got parents to act, uh, advocate, you know, you know, not only for themselves, also to, to convince their neighbor and their friend to, you know, to participate. So I, I would think that uh, by, by having people to openly discuss lots of the controversial issues, that will help them to get involved in the system. Okay, before Yang, by the way, this whole session is being recorded, and Dinding TV are famous in fast turnaround into YouTube short video. So whatever you share, it's not just in that 30 some audience, it is, I don't know the, the viewership. Uh, like last week when we were in DC, we were live watching by over 7,000 people at the same time while we had, yeah. 69,000. So, so don't think that you're only talking to 15 or 20 some people. Actually, that's a lot more. So, yeah, please. Actually, I'm quite optimistic about it. I live in Fremont. Fremont has been rated as uh, one of the happiest cities in the United States. And uh, right now, uh, on the city council, we have uh, the first uh, female Asian mayor in the history of Fremont, Lily May. We also have an Indian American city council member, so that two out of five uh, are Asian. Also, um, right now, 54% uh, uh, of the residents in Fremont are Asian residents. Um, I remember when I was running in 2014, Chinese voters only counted for 8% of the voters, Indian voters 9%, altogether 17%. However, this year, four years later, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, voters counted for 18% and uh, Indian voters 14% in my, in my district, District 4, almost one third of the voters. Um, so I believe that as time goes on, more and more Asian residents uh, will be qualified to, or eligible to vote. And uh, then um, by the joint effort, uh, we can really encourage them to participate in the election. How? I agree. Uh, for most Asian parents, education is a big issue. We can find um, important issues in a school district to motivate them so that they begin to pay attention to the ongoing uh, school board uh, election and try to find their ideal uh, candidate uh, for this election. Also, even though like uh, uh, about 60 to 80 percent of the residents don't have uh, kids in schools. Uh, we can still uh, use uh, the current issues like uh, traffic, housing, and public safety to get their attention to motivate them to participate in the local election. Uh, so uh, with the numbers I just gave, I just believe that uh, um, in the future more and more, uh, more, and more uh, Asian uh, voters will participate. Thank you. Okay, Dean, please, one minute. Could you give us an enticing point? Okay. Thank you, guys. I think everybody uh, said what I wanted to say, but also, the reason why also I think we could start with um, educating, like, how to and why videos, where everything right now, you know, it's gone through social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. If we share and educate uh, our kids and the people out there why it's so important to vote and, you know, uh, share uh, share everybody's knowledge here. I think it'll be great. We start our kids young, letting them know what the value and what the reason why they should vote. And if you give them that value and potency, uh, and and how it can change uh, uh, the whole environment, make it better, then I think that's how we can start. Again, like I said, social media right now is so powerful. If we can all share and work together, you know, like they say, teamwork makes the dream work. Together, everyone changes more. So that's what we got to do. We got to work as one and, and help one another. So everybody has a different background here. And I think we all can relate to everybody. But again, it starts with our kids. It starts with people going to school and kind of educating the, the, the kids why it's so important to vote. And that's, I think, how we can actually 
get everybody to come and support. Thank you, and I can echo to that because my youngest stepdaughter is volunteer to do Instagram for one of the campaigns so that they can reach out to younger generation. So last but not least, uh, we have Barry Chang who make it. Um, so I, I will give him a very succinct uh, two minutes, give us three talking point. How can be a smart, informed, and active voter? Okay. Uh, everybody get to have to come out and vote. Don't, don't think only one vote doesn't make that much difference, but it does make a difference. Okay, look at the Florida situation. When there's so many campus shooting and the lawmaker is not doing anything, and Florida is a very heavily Republican state and never passed the, uh, any legislation nature about the gun control or gun safety. And now the student organize and start working together and not force the uh, Florida uh, governor and also Florida legislature to, to do it right away. So don't think you're young, you're 17 or you're 18, but your vote is really, really important, every vote. And especially the situation, what I have seen in this country and also in locally, the people have no shame to make up the fake news and they can continue to lie, like our president lied more than 4,000 times and still okay. I mean, you got to get out and, and, and stand up to, to tell if something is wrong, tell them. You know, I mean, in my, in my city, just on the city council, just, just Tuesday night, when we were talking about the second reading on Valco specific plan and the opposition council member was twist the word, say, oh, the candidate for council, Hang Wei, is not supporting tier two, which is not true. And lucky enough, Hang still sitting there. So I call, call Hang up, say, Hang, confirm it. You support tier two for the vocal revitalization or not? He say, she said, yes, definitely. And, but then you can see the council member has no problem to twist the word. The work. And then the last meeting, when the superintendent was there, Polly Bobby, and he was telling the everybody, say, oh, because this Balco project will increase the student, high school has to open another new high school, Sunnyvale High School has to reopen. And so we called the superintendent up and asked her, are you going to reopen? He said, no. She said, no. Okay. So, I mean, all this kind of stuff, you can see. You just twist it, twist it, and then fake it, and then have no shame at all to, to continue to lie, which is really worrying me. I mean, for the American value, you just erode it, okay? Once we are here, even though most of us, the candidate are, are, are a minority, but we've got to participate. Everybody got to participate. And then if something is wrong, has to stand up and then tell them it's wrong. And you've got to come out and vote. Otherwise, the thing cannot be changed. But if you come out and vote, it will be changed. Thank you. I remember someone said, if you know something wrong, you don't do anything about it, you are as guilty as the one who wronged somebody. So may we all take up our own responsibility, do whatever we could in our own corner. And I just want to give a big applause to our, our panelists. I, I know it's very late night. So what I hear, I take home is you need to be well informed. But most of all, you need to participate. And you also encourage your others who actually have registered to actively vote. Voted with wisdom means that don't follow the flow. Don't listen to the fake news, but use your conscience to judge. So thank you all. And uh, anyone, any more question? Okay, one more. Hold on. Um, I don't have a question, but I just have some information that maybe you already know. I was just checking some statistics today and came across this article that I thought was really interesting since I was coming here tonight. And it's put out by the Asian American Advancing Justice. 
And I think this is really important to know. It says Asian American voters are using vote by mail ballots in large numbers. Two thirds, 66% of Asian Americans who voted in the November 2000 election cast their votes using vote by mail, a rate higher than average. The average is 58%. Santa Clara County has the highest, one of the highest rates in California for vote by mail. But vote by mail ballots submitted by Asian Americans are more likely to be rejected by county election officials than average. Among the targeted counties in the study, the vote by mail rate rejection rate for Asian Americans was 15% higher than average because of the signature did not match. So I think that's something really important for uh, people who are speaking to the Asian American community to not only be sure you're registered, I think all of us, I went in and checked to see if I was still registered because you never know what's going on, but I think they have to remember if they're gonna vote by mail, how did you sign your original ballot, or not your original, your original uh, registration form and make sure if you vote by mail, you use the same signature. Otherwise, and I mean, looking at that statistic, 15% higher, that's a really alarming statistic to me. Thank you for the reminder. So uh, let's all learn more about it, and let's all encourage everyone goes out before November 7th. Oh, one, one more. Okay, one minute. They want to go. Uh, just, just to add on to what you said, because when you sign, when you are using the absentee banner, you have to date it. And a lot of time people forgot to date. And then if you don't date it, you'll be rejected. So just checking out every detail, make sure that you sign it and date it. And then sign the, the same as your, when you apply, yeah. So I wish all this reminder information will be recorded as a reminder. And if Dinin TV can, serve that and also with the Indian current make that reminder for all your constituents so we can help bridge the gap a little bit. Can, can I quickly add yes. to that? We actually we have an organization Asian American for Better Community working with a legal woman voter. In October 28, we're going to have our first ever Chinese translated pro and cons in Saratoga, West Hope Church. And uh, that's definitely a great reminder. I think we have a specific thing we want to remind, to, to tell a lie to the Chinese community in Saratoga. Thank yes, you. Yes, every bit of the effort will help us getting closer. Uh, for this coming election, I want to lead you a little secret that you might be surprised from the census and from the national data. Early this month, I hear from DC out of more than 100 community leaders sharing from some of the community that you never heard of, Asian American vote increased threefold, 300% increase. So be ready for the surprise this year. Okay. I would like to say that it's people like you that are going to get people like you to vote. The very fact that you're role models, the very fact that you're, you're out there, that people see, gee, they're just like me. And I think of, of all of the reasons why you will get new voters to vote, maybe not smart, but at least they'll vote, is because they see role models. And so, on behalf of everyone, I want to thank you for what you do. Thank you. So just do it. Thank you, everyone. Once again, on that late night, Friday night, really appreciate uh, what you share with us. Thank you very much, Anthony, and thanks for all our panelists. And uh, let's give them a round of applause, and thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. And stay here. We're going to take a picture, all of us, the rest of people. And